Hello, everybody. Welcome to Nursing Uncharted. My name is Maggie Reichard, and I'm the host for this podcast. And today we're going to be talking about nursing school, and we're going to be reflecting on our original experiences in nursing and kind of see how they tie into who we are as nurses today. And I am so excited to be sitting down with an old nursing school buddy who's still one of my very best friends today, Shannon Benish. Shan has been in the nursing profession since 2014, working in a variety of intermediate care units in academic and trauma centers up and down the East Coast. She started off her career working in a neurostroke step-down unit in D.C. and then completed a travel nurse contract in a cardiac step-down uh, in Philadelphia. She then went on to work in respiratory step-down in three well-known institutions in New York. Needless to say, she has a lot of experience in intermediate care and is a certified progressive care nurse. Shan went back to school and graduated in 2019 with her master's degree, and she is a certified adult geriatric primary care nurse practitioner. She currently works as an NP in a pulmonary outpatient clinic in New York. Outside of nursing, Shan loves to run, to read, and to bop around breweries and vineyards on her day off. Shan, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Mag. I'm so I love that you're here. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be awesome. fun. It's like a it normal really phone is. chat. <laughs> yeah. Just just in reading your bio, it really hit me like how much you've accomplished in the last seven years. You've done oh, so much. Thanks. Thank you. Like, yeah, it's weird to think when you said 2014, it feels like it was like a year. I mean, you yeah. know, I can't believe how long we've been graduated and then yeah, a lot of things happened in between. <laughs> I know. I mean, does it's got to feel like a lot, right? I guess I've never, like, seen it on paper aside from, like, a well, no one's ever read it to me. So that was kind of <laughs> humbling. Um, but, you know, true. when you write your resume and it, like, gets long and, and in your mind, you're thinking, oh, I, I just put too many bullet points for each job or something. But then you're like, oh, that's four. That's four jobs. Yeah. Like, that's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it's been cool. Let's start off with you telling me just a little bit about being a nurse practitioner in an outpatient setting. Like, what does your daily schedule look like? What types of patients do you see? Yeah, good, uh, good question. It's so. It was a very t- uh, tough transition. I I made the transition from inpatient to outpatient in the middle of COVID, um, May of 2020. Mm-hmm. So, um, and in New- I am in New York and was in New York before I transitioned to this role. So. Um, going into pulmonary, I imagined it would have been very smooth, but transitioning from in to outpatient for me was, um, challenging at that time, just because of like the time it was and how needed everyone is in the hospital. And I had to do so many, um, onboarding logistical things. Mm -hmm. Um, in my role now I do uh, a good amount of research and I never had done that before. Um, and so the amount of paperwork and, um, and it should be that way, but following protocols, reading protocols, signing off on mm. financial engagements, those types of things. Um, but now that that's all settled because I've been there for over a year, um, the normal, the normal day to day is, uh, a lot of, um, I probably on average see like six ish patients a day. And then, um, I'm lucky enough to work in a practice with five physicians and then myself, so uh, a lot of like collaborating, collaborating among teams um, and a lot of things that just I never had dealt with in the inpatient world, like prior authorizations, figuring out what mm-hmm. medications are and are not covered for specific insurances, imaging, um, kind of working through what healthcare is to the majority of people that I just had never known being inpatient. You're like, oh, you need a CT? We'll roll you right down there. Oh, you, you know, yeah. like blood work and... Um, if people are at their house, you can't force them to do things. And so it's, uh, it's a juggling of what we want in from a clinical setting and what's realistic for reality. Um, but it's, it was a, a good transition and, uh, it's, it's been really nice to get in there, but, um, the, the two worlds I'm, I'm happy for my inpatient knowledge, but the two worlds are very, very different. Yeah. Absolutely. I remember I worked in an outpatient once, um, in an endocrine clinic and seeing like 
prior auths and people not being able to get access to their medications and like, Mm -hmm. you know, just like working with pharmacies all the time. I was like, there's all this extra like administrative stuff that you don't think about when you're inpatient, you know? I know. And it's, and ignorantly so I had really like no idea that how much, um, yeah, comes along like paperwork and administrative work. Yeah, but yeah. it's a it's a good it was a good transition. The timing I think I wish was maybe different, but um I'm I'm happy where I am now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in at being in a pulmonary clinic in COVID, did you was there research like COVID research going on or it was mm-hmm. it research that was already yeah. I think I think most institutions wound up doing like very similar trials like to figure out what medications or what treatment was right and uh over time it was always interesting to see like mainstay treatment and how originally we were like oh plasma and then we we're like oh no not plasma and then it was remdesivir <laughs> and then i'm sorry not remdesivir sorry uh plaquenil then it wasn't plaquenil and um and now it's still remdesivir and that's kind of uh up for question lately and it's just there's always that research and then now more so like the long-term effect of COVID, uh, which we see in the outpatient setting, which I think yeah. is something that a lot of people inpatient, as terrible as it is um, being in, like working inpatient in COVID is the long-term effects of COVID are very, very real. So all of that kind of investigation and um, following those pulmonary effects and a lot of neuro effects and cardiac. Yeah, it's, I was yeah, so it's about really that. interesting. Yeah, I was reading some article the other day about um, like neurological and brain damage, and they were only looking at um, deceased patients. But I mm-hmm. think it was like similar. They had like similar um, degenerative breakdown, like that you see like right. in Alzheimer's or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I wasn't it about like the um, the, the synapses, and I, I I don't know if I read that, but there's been so much about like encephalopathy that they've been noticing post COVID, um, which, yeah, there's just, it's so unknown. Um, it's hard yeah. to treat and then hard to like, you just always are wondering. Um, yeah. but yeah, it's crazy that you found yourself in a pulmonary clinic in the middle of like at the start of yeah. COVID too. It really is crazy <laughs> 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 to me too. <laughs> well, let's jump into nursing school. First off, you've done nursing school twice. You did undergrad, which we did together, and then grad school. And I've never done grad school. I'm I'm curious to know like what grad school was like. Like was it tame or do you still like take tests and then go drinking with your classmates? Like what's <laughs> what's the difference here? <laughs> I think it was uh I, I so it was I went part-time. Um so it's two and a half years. Um, so I guess the timeline was actually kind of similar, but there's something to be said about, um, having a job while you're in school, because it's kind of like a big, I didn't work through college, but, um, if God forbid things didn't work out or you didn't do well on one test, it wasn't like now I'm not going to graduate and then I'm not going to sit for boards and then I'm, and then I'm not going to become a nurse. And then, and, and like just that rolling kind of so thought, um, it was such a, a nice thing to know because I was working and in school at the same time. And it was great to be like, I have a job. I like my job. <laughs> yeah, if this doesn't work out. You know, like, so, yeah. yeah. Like, and, and also <laughs> the same thing for like, when I had graduated, I had the ability to be like, oh, well, like, what do I really think I want to do? Because I have the ability to look around and be a little bit more picky because again, I have a job. I like what I do. Um, and so like it, it afforded me the ability to be a bit more picky and, um, I had graduated and I think it took me, uh, a little over a year to, to get a job, which, um, was a blessing. And, uh, but it was nice, very different than undergrad when you graduate and you're like, oh, so I graduated and where's my job? And I have to start paying off my student loans and I can't, I don't want to move back in with my parents and, you know, like anything, that whole, I'll take anything. <laughs> right. Yeah. So it was, uh, that was different. The school was, um, it was different. Definitely like the, the things you learn because you already have so much baseline knowledge. Um, mm. I think the same as, as undergrad, I learned everything where most things I learned, I learned in clinical or I learned 
on the job, but definitely with the right building blocks. Like I couldn't, I mean, I, I needed to learn what to prescribe at certain times, but of course, like to look at a textbook at an ear infection, you're like, Oh, and, you know, and then you see it for the first time and you're like, Oh, you know, that didn't look like what I thought it would have or whatever. Um, yeah. the same exact thing, like I think in undergrad, but, uh, I definitely had drinks after tests if that was a part of the question. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Um, you had like that same bond, you know, like it was, yeah, a little different. I think like, I mean, undergrad for us at least was like, you lived around, everyone lived around the corner and, you know, like we were all so close. Uh, I made two really great friends, um, and a lot of really great colleagues, uh, like through school, but, um, yeah, two really great friends who really helped motivate me. And, uh, we studied together and, you know, like complained, uh, but that, that really helped a lot. And if I missed a class, you know, those things that you really, the same friendships formed, but, uh, again, different just because the ties were, it was only part-time. It was just a bit yeah. different. No clinicals were done together. So it really was all academic mm-hmm. learning, um, as a group. And then so much kind of individualized things. I see. I see. Okay. Yeah. Do you, do you get kind of a... Uh, like rotation almost like, do you get to see different um, disciplines in yeah. your clinicals? So I can't speak for every and every NP school uh, majority of the ones I know of like that. I have other friends in or mine um, you seek out your own clinical. So my okay. degree, although a mouthful, thanks for reading it when you introduced me. <laughs> Man, uh, I got that's why it has to be got... like my initials have to be NPC because I, I don't <laughs> think I could put that many initials in a row. Um, the, when, we, when we first got it, you had to do at least one clinical in primary care because that's the, my degree. Um, mm-hmm. But I had done one in primary care, one in cardiology, and one in palliative care. Um, okay. but those were like where my interests were lying at the time. Um, and so some people were able to do them in the OR, uh, it was mostly supposed to be surrounded outpatient because that's the degree. Sure. Um, like they didn't really want you rounding in internal medicine. Um, my school was luckily very easygoing, but I think, um, from what I gather of some friends and some Instagram accounts I follow, I think finding clinical, uh, in a master's degree level often falls on. The, the student and that gotcha. is very stress driven to find someone who will take you on. And, um, so it's, it's a bit, it's very different yeah. in that regard. How do you, how do you f- like network in that way? Like, are there people like connected to the school? Or- yeah. My school had a list of people who would take you on, um, if okay. you wanted, but I, I went to school like an hour from where I was living. Um, I, what did I do? I wrote a cover letter and a resume and I drove to like doctor's offices and dropped it off. Oh my God, um, so much my, work. Yeah. My <laughs> cardiology, the one I did in cardiology was just someone who I had like done that with, um, which was such a, a great, that was such a great rotation for me. And then palliative care was someone who I had worked with at the hospital. And okay. I struggled to find a primary care um, physician or NP to take me on. Uh, but then I, was able to find one just through like contacts and things. But yeah, it was a little bit, it was very stressful. (laughs) (laughs) We will be right back to this episode. We just want to take a brief moment to shout out the company that makes this show possible, American Mobile. If you're a nurse interested in traveling, visit AmericanMobile.com to explore the amazing benefits that American Mobile has to offer. Featuring short and long-term contract opportunities at leading facilities across the country with higher earning potential, W-2 employee status, and a flexible schedule, American Mobile is your advocate for career success. Visit AmericanMobile.com to begin your travel nursing adventure today. And now, back to the show. That's crazy. I didn't know all of that. I mean, I remember, I remember you telling me about clinicals, but I didn't realize there was so much like legwork <laughs> for, for you guys to get that clinical experience. Yeah. And on the other end, it was actually, it winds up being a lot of work for the person who's taking you on. Like they have to submit all their credentials yeah. because it's not, of course, if someone's working for an institution, 
those things um, are hopefully and should be maintained, but still it's like, oh, your license and your insurance and they have to present all of that. So it often wasn't a welcomed, it it was someone doing you a nice favor, you know, like, help me, please. (laughs) Yeah. I like to think I was a good person around, but I'm, I'm, I know that the people who mentored me, like really, they helped me a lot. So uh, hoping to one day return the favor in in this role um, when the time comes. Yeah. Yeah. You would be such a great mentor. Ah, oh, thanks, Meg. <laughs> it was fun with nursing students. I remember like always really loving, like when the undergrad students come to the floor, it's, it's cool to see like the, their eyes open up when they see like a, a like when you're doing wound care and you're like, oh, you okay? But also like, this is cool. This is how you, you know. Like. <laughs> I remember there was, there was this uh, nurse who, um, I love nursing students too. Like I, you know, I, I, I like like giving that little extra time to like teach them things. And like, sometimes like on a neuro floor, I'd like pull up a CT scan and we're like, this is why, you know, yeah, they're like, that's this is cool. why. That's, that's really cool. And there was one, um, nurse that I used to work with on, a, another unit and she remembered me. She was like, I was a nursing student on this floor before I was a nurse. And you like showed me, you are so patient with me. And I'm like, mm-hmm. Oh my God, like what a full, full circle moment. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like being nice to this. And now like, sh- you know, she was really interested in neuro and she became a nurse on that unit. Like, Isn't it was that really the best? cool to see. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we say like, we said earlier, like, as we learned so much in nursing school, couldn't have been there without it. But like the clinicals and having someone uh, in clinical who was like, do you want me to teach you how to like crush meds and give them through like a peg? You know, when you learn about that in school and it's like, it's a tube that comes out like what? Like you just think (laughs) about it and you're like, huh? Like that's what it is. And then you see it for the first time. And so, yeah, to be, to learn that underneath someone, I would never forget you either. I, I yeah. always remember the nurses who were like, well, why do you think we're going to not give that medication if the heart rate is 52? And you know why? And that's when you took the test that you're like, oh, I remember yeah. like, yes. you know, so, so true. yeah, I think it's, uh, I, I, I think it can be very nurturing if, if you're, able to surround yourself with the right people in clinicals. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Help me run through the nursing undergrad curriculum for listeners who aren't nurses, but, and also for all of our nurses who want a, like a little refresher or a little PTSD, you know, oh, no. <laughs> wherever, I'm not sure which one we're going to do for people. I have to, I have to really think of, um, well, starting with prereqs, there was microbiology, anatomy, physiology, Nutrition. Oh, nutrition. Statistics. Yes. Statistics. And chem. Did we have to take chem? Like um, chem one, no lab. And psych 101. I tested oh. out of that one. Oh, nice. good for you. I didn't know we had, to, we had to take psych. I'm sure we did. Yeah, we had to take psych 101. But that was one of the AP classes you could take in high school. And I, and I tested You're very out smart, that Mag. Good for it you. It was the only one. It was the only <laughs> AP class. <laughs> I had to put that in there. <laughs> Just toss it out. It would have been the only class that I would have enjoyed taking again, though. I loved psych. But yeah, yeah those were the prereqs, I guess. I don't remember, Kim. I think that's, I think, I'm I'm almost certain. It, I don't think I would have taken Kim on my own accord, which is why I feel like it must have been a prereq. <laughs> fair, fair. I mean, it makes sense. I, Yeah. And then for nursing school, I was trying to remember these up to, to, so. First semester. There was. Wasn't it like foundations? Like, foundations um, of nursing. That's what yeah. it was. I thought it was like introduction to practice or something. I think it was that, that foundations right. of nursing. And then. Um, clinical app, clin apps, clinical applications. Cl- yeah. One, and, that, like, and then. A, a lot of them were like one and two. Yeah. Right. Um, pharmacology. That's a good one. And then like the specialties. So like women's health. Yep. Peds. Um, peds. Critical care. Yep. Critical care. Um, that was like one that, and two. I think that capstone that at the end. Oh yes. Capstone uh, community health. Mm. 
I'm going to feel bad if we forget any. You're really putting us on the spot here, Meg. (laughs) Um, uh, Nursing informatics. That was one of them, right? And then there was ethics. Wasn't there nursing theory and ethics or? Yes, um, you're right. Something which I remember zero of. I don't remember that at all. But you're, I, I think, I'm sure you remember some, like the ethic, like the somewhat of what we learned in ethics. I feel like you probably apply it and don't remember. Probably, yeah. Like, was there like much? a leadership class too, like nursing leadership? There was. Yeah. Was there? I think. Or was that capsule? I feel like were those synonymous? Were those maybe? Oh no, yeah. I'm gonna have to look this up and later. Then, um, I should have looked it up beforehand, but I thought it would be fun to try to remember. This is how your, mem- this is how your memory is better by not looking things up and talking them out. You yeah, know? This, is, this is good for and us. And then um, one of my one of my favorite ones that everybody used to um, <laughs> like hate that I think is so applicable was therapeutic communication. Didn't we have a whole class on that? Or was that a part of psych? But it was like maybe. Maybe it was four weeks long of just therapeutic communication. I don't remember. Did we that we was... had a whole class on psych, right? We had mm-hmm. a whole class on psych then. Yeah. 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 I think that's it. I think I covered all the bases. That's, I mean, it sounds right. I thought you were going right. to want us to put them in order. And I was, I, I was worried because it was, <laughs> that was good. It was, I guess Not only four semesters, but I, I don't think I, um, I don't remember like what we started with and what we ended with, except for capstone. Yeah. yeah. Retrospectively, what classes do you think we've you've used the most? Like looking back, pharmacology. That's definitely probably the one I use the absolute most. Pharmacology uh, is like the only one where I really, I I've bought textbooks just to like you know review. Re- review stuff. Like I wish that I could take a pharmacology class now because then I would like be like, Oh, this is, I use this all the time. I forgot about that side effect. Like, correct. Or like even the way that things work and what comes through the kidneys and like how, yeah, you know, um, like metabolic pathways, like, and like the RAS system, like, you know, uh, like liver pathways, like, Mm-hmm. It's so, I feel I, and then the metabolite, <laughs> like shame on I, me. I need to know that stuff. It's I know. And then what you shouldn't give together, you know, so that was, that was great. I think the, sometimes the medical record makes us worse at pharmacology because it tells you when something interacts. So you don't necessarily always need to know. Um, <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. It, it makes things so, so easy for nurses. Yeah. There was one moment, um, during nursing school that connected the dots for me from pharmacology textbook to pharmacology real life. And it was the Jay-Z song, Empire State of Mind. There was a lyric where he was like, MDMA got you feeling like a champion. City never sleeps, but a slip you in an ambient. Do you remember that song? (laughs) And I was like in pharmacology and I was like, MDMA. And I was like looking up, it was like methyl, a diox, methamphetamine, ecstasy. And it was like, oh my God, he's talking about ecstasy. Ecstasy is making him feel like a champion. And I remember <laughs> like, it, we must have been studying for a pharmacology test or something. And I like wrote on our Facebook wall in nursing. I was like, epiphany. <laughs> and I like wrote everybody like this, this lyric. And I was like, it's ecstasy. He's talking about ecstasy. And then I like... <laughs> I accidentally posted it to not our nursing Facebook page, but our like Cap Alpha Theta Facebook page <laughs> that we were on. And all the girls were like, LOL, what? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, <laughs> and then you got like two likes so from, nerdy, from like, like me. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, oh, oh, it was such a nerdy moment, but it like made it click for me. I was like, oh, I know what MDMA is. Right. I know well, all the Well, and then those bags. are going to always be the things you like. I. I feel like I always remember you. I don't know why you did this all the time, um, but you'd always be like, "Oh, it's April. I got an Ace Prill, and that's how I always <laughs> still remember all all my Cinepril." And then you said something about cough with like <laughs> with Ace, and um, and then I remember too when we were in uh, uh, Women's Health and we were learning about how the baby goes down the birth control the birth control. Also, we learned about that, um, the birth canal. 
And I can't remember if you were like, uh, oh, it was also another song, Mag. Um, oh, God. Curse <laughs> on your full, podcast. Full songs. But you said face down. <laughs> ass up that's the way we like to have babies and I just remember no, I like that's how I could always that. remember and then there was the thing about how the baby should come down the birth canal oh and I think it was ROA or I don't know and we would just like text these things and we like, like I'd row, get your text row, and I'd be like pee myself down the birth canal that's yeah. what it was <laughs> and you I remember being like this is so funny and no one else Why am ever I this way no, it was, but I never, but still now, seven years later, I, I, God bless like everyone who does songs. women's health. It's not something I could ever do, but I, that's, those are the things I remember about women's health. <laughs> um, so if I ever have a baby, I'll know how it should be delivered and <laughs> yes. some other things too. <laughs> and then it's going to go through the birth canal. Now, you know, because of that. Yeah. Time. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I wish I had, God. I wish I had, you should do like another podcast where you just tell everyone like all of our winky box, you know, longer, longer, yeah. longer drop. All or, of that, all of the yeah. acronyms and all yeah. the sayings and stuff. Oh. What's, what's Mobits too? Oh man. No, I can't remember. Beat, yep. beat, beat drop. Then you have, now you have a wanky box. If P doesn't Which like is, this is through, cardiac you have rhythms. a Mobits too. If what P doesn't it? like QRS through, then you have a Mobits too. And yes. Then, yeah. I'll, there was the one, there was one that was, um, it was going through the heart blocks and it was attributing it to a, um, couple going through a divorce or something. And it was like Wankabak or Mobitz one is that he, the husband comes home later and later and later until he doesn't come home at all. And then Mobitz two was, oh no, no, no. Mobit's one is he just comes home late, right? Because the PR interval is just prolongated. Yeah. And then Mobit's. I think you're right. If it would have, no, because Mobit's, Mobit's one would be one, like, he's coming home later and later every night. And then like the weekend comes and he just doesn't show up. That's Wankabach. Yeah. Yeah. And then Mobit's two would be if Pete, so it's normal. And then it just like doesn't come through every like whatever, however many. Yeah. So Sometimes he doesn't come home. Sometimes he yeah. just comes come home, home with flowers. The next time he comes home with chocolate, and then he doesn't come home again. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes. Yes. laughs> and then, and then, third degree heart block is like when the P, P waves and the QRS just are uh, they're not like in sync. So yeah. it's just like so it's like the couple just is like living their own lives and they're not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> complete heartbreak, complete heart bra block. Yeah, <laughs> you know, right. <laughs> oh, I never God. heard that one. We, I like that. That's funny. Yeah. God, that's uh, that gets you through all the acronyms. I, I and I remember too, um, I don't I I hope I hope Al will listen to this, but I remember Al had all those colored pens. And I remember being like, <laughs> can I make a copy in color? It's just so organizing. Like everything's so organized. Your handwriting is so good. And then I would look at my own notes and it'd be like, uh, I Trash. can't even think. It'd be like lungs, <laughs> air, breathing. And then, and then it would be like heart rate. And I'd be like, what are you saying? Like, what, what were you going for here? Like, <laughs> <laughs> this is stream of consciousness. Like I have yeah. no idea what this means. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't think it should be understated how much like studying and learning we did in those that two years, the four years, really. I mean, yeah. it's kind of crazy. I feel like we lived in that library. Like, yeah. Oh, for, oh, absolutely. And I remember, too, it almost became like a social event. Like you'd be like, oh, see mm -hmm. you here tomorrow. What time you come in? Oh, I'll be. And then. <laughs> Like, and if you didn't Me see jitties, someone there, yeah. you were like worried. Like, yeah, what have you been like, like are there? you okay? Like, were you away the weekend? <laughs> I didn't see you at the library. <laughs> yeah, I remember getting getting to the library at like eight a.m. and knowing that we were going to be there for twelve hours. Mm -hmm. And like, almost like I don't know. I just loved being in the library. First of all, that library at JMU so nice. is beautiful. So I mean, nice. it was just like 
all windows, like open spaces. There's like a bunch of different, you know, places that like environments you can sit in and everything. It was just like very, and quiet, like Mm -hmm. it was just very relaxing. You know, I loved when we'd all get there, like when, let's say you got there at eight and I feel like I'd come and see you at like nine and then I'd be like, Hey, what time do you want to go to lunch? Like Shannon, it's nine in the morning, but it was like all you had to look forward to. Like, (laughs) and then we'd be like, who else is around? Let's put in the, let's put it in the Facebook group. And, and then we'd have eight of us go over and we'd be like, we can talk about anything, but studying for the next 30 minutes. That, yeah. that was the bond. Like, those were the bonds. Like, that was really... Yeah. <laughs> we really bonded as a class. There was 60 of us. And, you know, I mean, all of us, I mean, we were just with each other all the time. All, like, Yeah. I feel like there won't, uh, there will never be a day. Like, I, I don't know if we were the exception to the rule or if that's what all, like, undergrad nursing school and classes are like. But if I ever, like, came in contact with any of those lovely humans we went to school with. I mean, I like still pen pals with one of them. Like I just, I, I'm so happy every time I see their like great successes. It's really, yeah, that was a good, that was a good crew. <laughs> it was a good crew. I feel like everybody was so motivated and so driven and it just like fueled your own like yeah. accountability and responsibility, you know? Cause you knew if you weren't at the library, everybody else was like, right. You know, so it's not like, and all your friends were there. So like, you know, you're just always there. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was like, that also is maybe it was a uh, bad because we only became, I feel like we, our friendships became so strong and then maybe we lacked with like, di- like a diverse pe- like group of people. It was like, oh, you're not in nursing school. I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, it was kind of, it was like a, you sacrificed, you know, you didn't have a lot of time for anything else. Like we were able to be in a sorority because I felt like it was, there was like a a chunk of us that were in nursing school. So that kind of normalized it. But a lot of times like you couldn't do anything else. No. Yeah. And and sometimes I feel like I, I think back and I'm a little, not regretful um, because it like definitely afforded me where I am today. But sometimes I look back and I wonder, you know, if I should have been in the library a couple hours less a week and maybe I would have, yeah. you know, like, um, but, I, but then I don't think that's even really f- fair, you know? Yeah. But we really you, devoted ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think that kind of mentality of like all work, no play, like puts us more at risk for like a work-life imbalance when we graduate, like in nursing school? I mean, I've, maybe no. that's not a fair question because I feel like we did, like we played a lot. We did. <laughs> also. We did. Like we when had a we lot could. Of fun. But I feel like I don't know. There's just there's such a that it, that's such a problem in nursing. Mm-hmm. You know, like try, like finding a work life balance, and you wouldn't think that that was true because you only work three days a week. But right. But at the same time, like it's just such commonplace. I'm just wondering. If like, you know, starting off and studying so hard and like, you know, putting all of your efforts into that, you know, studying, if that like worsens it somehow. Yeah, no, it's, I've never really thought about that. I, yeah. I wonder like how you mentioned how we went to working three, three days a week. If, if, if everybody went in like to inpatient or three or four days, um, having gone from like school and then the library and clinicals for two years plus Um, you know, I do wonder if then, yeah, when you did graduate, was I a little more crazy because I had four days off and I could finally, maybe, maybe I would have been the same either way. We were 22. (laughs) Yeah. um, I think about that. Yeah. Like, I mean, I remember getting into my first job and being like, oh, I only have a three day commitment. What else am I going to do for these other four days? I'm going to like. And even just like sit around and do nothing. You were like, I'm allowed to do that now. And like with no, (laughs) with no, nothing hanging over your head. Like, yeah. Oh, you know, I, of course anyone could sit around and do nothing. And then the next day you're devastated. Whereas I, yeah, I wonder, I've never really thought about, about that. I do. I, I, I do want to like go back and say, I don't want to say I'm regretful for how much time I spent in the library, but um, yeah. it did definitely like afford us the ability to be confident when we could be. But I, mm-hmm. yeah, I do sometimes reflect on our college experience. And then I'm like, oh, like, again, our friendship is so strong. We spent so much time together. 
in the library, but we spend so much time together. So I guess it's all relative at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, time is time. We spend it all together, I guess. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> As far as like practical application of nursing school, do you think, do you think nursing school like really set us up for success or do you think there was a lot of fluff in those classes and clinicals? I don't think there was ever any fluff in clinicals for me. Yeah. Uh, I think Agreed. there was maybe one clinical where at least for me, we went to like a, a, a rehab, like a, an acute rehab. Mm -hmm. And the goal there was to learn how to like properly bathe patients, properly make beds. Uh, and, and you, you knew that all already. You, you were working at, right. You had yeah. done all of that home care. For me, that was care, all yeah. me. Yeah. Um, so Man, that, those cares. were like, honestly, those skills were much needed. Um, <laughs> and even, but I have to say, even after that clinical, when I started my first job, like. The amount of beds I ruined because I didn't know how to properly <laughs> roll a sheet. Um, you know, so I think clinicals are always worth their weight in gold. Um, I don't know about class. I think when we were in it, I was able to prioritize certain classes over others because I thought they carried yeah. more weight. Yeah. Um, like I always, I always thought that like, uh, what, what, uh, I don't even remember what you called it now, but like, what was it called? Like one, two, and three clinical. clinical applications. Yeah. Yeah. Like I thought those and, and of course critical care, but I don't know. I, I think, I think we all got something out of all of them. Yeah. But I, I do wonder a bit about the curriculum, like how, how you could make it so it would be more, I don't know if you can ever come out of nursing school and really feel like you're ready. And I think, ev I don't know yeah. for me, every day I go to work and I don't feel ready, like as a nurse, you know, and <laughs> I think that it's almost the same feeling, but maybe with a bit more confidence, yeah. you know. Um, I feel like I, I honestly, I didn't use critical care until like eight weeks ago. And I, like when I was, I mean, you probably did as progressive care, but like, you know, ARDS and swan guns, catheters and pulmonary artery pressures. And what, like, I am relearning all of that now. And I was like, man, I haven't thought about this stuff since, yeah. you know, seven years ago, but like, there was so much emphasis on it, you know? And then I just feel like, I mean, we, there's so much that like there, it's like all of the kind of more subjective topics like therapeutic communication and like, um, fundamentals and, uh, stuff that you probably didn't prioritize as much, but you use all the time every day. Yeah. Like I, you know, I feel like I, I should have put more emphasis, you know, on it back then, but I, I but do I was remember so therapeutic with... communication though, and, and getting the test and being like, well, what would I say? And what should I say? And still, and even still now, like, sometimes I'm like, oh, well, I definitely could have said that a lot better than I just did. Or <laughs> like, you know, um, there was a lot of, there was a lot of like, I wanted to say the right thing, like the exact right thing. And I just didn't know what to say. Cause I was 21, but mm -hmm. like, I wanted a textbook to tell me like, what do I say in these circumstances? Right. And I remember reading one of the books for therapeutic communication, which I'm sure we didn't really read. I mean, cause we were prioritizing other things, but I remember reading this one piece and it was a example phrase that a nurse should say uh, for a patient that was like lonely or agitated or something. And, and, um, like the patient, the example was something like the patient said, Oh, nobody, nobody cares for me. And, and nobody's around for me. And the nurse replied, well, I'm here for you now. I'm here for you for the next 12 hours. And I was like, this, this is what I need. I need like these <laughs> phrases. Tell me exactly what to say for every circumstance. Yeah. I think, you know? I think so much of that though, too, like that's, pro that's definitely appropriate. But then too, you have like patients who are lonely and scared and then they're angry and it's like they mm -hmm. wouldn't respond like it's all like meeting people where they are I feel like the therapeutic communication is also like yeah being a kind and compassionate human like you know if someone's very proper right you can't go in there and be like so you poop like it's all <laughs> like so 
relative to, you know, who it is you're dealing with. But I wonder if we could have like, uh, like, um, role playing, like, you know, how we do in, in like labs and, and, um, Oh, what was, what was the lab where like skill, skill day Mm -hmm. or something. We left that out of the curriculum. Yeah. (laughs) Skill day, skills. That was like a big class. The lab. (laughs) The the lab portion. We just like, you know, pushed that down in our memory. But, um, (laughs) but if we had like some kind of like scenario circumstance where it's like you, you're put in a difficult situation, like how do you respond to that professionally? I feel like that would have been something like beneficial for me as like a 20 year old going into. I don't know how we would have been able to like act, act that out, like without it being like me and you doing it. And I'm reading a script and then we're like laughing laughing. and I'm like, (laughs) you know, and then I'm like, Oh Maggie, good job. (laughs) I don't know. I'm, I'm the same as you, you know, like I, I have nothing more to offer than (laughs) than you have. We have the same books in front of us. I don't know. Even like, I remember when we learned how to put in foleys and I mean, those mannequins are just so unrealistic. And I think like there was, Oh, Oh my gosh. Do you know the story I'm about to tell? Are you laughing? Maybe I, I just, thought about it. I just but, sparked a memory in my mind yeah, that when I put a Foley in and I couldn't put the sterile water into the balloon and I got it all over the professor's face and she was so <laughs> mad and I was like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. She's like, it's fine. It's just nasty, toxic water all over my face. And I, oh, do you remember? Were you no, with me? No, that I, wasn't the, I was, I thought you were talking about the time where we like, it was like a code <laughs> situation and we like tried to put a Foley in somebody's nose. Like it was like a no, YouTube. We did? <laughs> yeah. And oh, the I teacher even... stopped us. She stopped the clinch. She stopped it right there. She's like, okay, you guys, <laughs> you guys are done. <laughs> But that's what I mean. Like who, why would we, you know, that's what I mean. Like, I think that that's why clinical was so important because you kind of knew your role, like, or like kind of, you know, there's someone who you can guide and someone who can guide you. And even in those situations when you're like, I'll hand you the supplies, that's a role you play. Whereas when, yeah, we're running a code and, and like, who's the leader, me? And I'm like, Ooh, Abby on her own. Oh, I got a scene. Like, those are the same medication in my mind. Like, no, Shan, you know, no, they're not. So, um, well, I, I think, know. I mean, you need, you need good, like, preceptors and instructors in those, you know, situations to, like, talk yeah. you through, like, your learning process. In, um, in NP school, there's certain, uh, programs that have live models. So, like, when you're learning, like, how to do a prostate exam, how to, it's mostly like prostate GYN Mm -hmm. and there's models who come in and you do your first exam on a person. Um, like that wasn't a full, my school didn't do that. Um, and so that would have been really lovely because then the first time I have to do a prostate exam on someone, it would have been like, it's my first time, you know, those things you're never supposed to say to someone. <laughs> this is but the like, first for me. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, me too. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I do. I do wonder if that could have been done better, but I think it would have had to be like, not amongst friends. You would have had to bring in clinical right. staff to act as patients or yeah. Yeah. something that's um, kind of like, what I was thinking, like having, having like a professor or something and, you know, mm-hmm. they could have, they could have been thinking it was funny too, you know, right. it may not have ended up serious, but I think it's, it's something that we could have really benefited from. If I could like piggyback off, I mean, I don't make curriculums, but it would be cool if you like tied it in with people who are going for theater and you had them come in and be like actors and actresses and that's the, I mean, and then someone else would observe and, uh, and would grade, but then it's like, this is the role you're playing. You're 65 and, you know, you were given a month to live and you can't leave the hospital and here's your first line. And then you just play it out like in reality, not, not textbook lines. I wonder. I think that's a pretty solid idea, Shane. Thanks. Thanks. If anyone gets into it, let me know how they, uh, how it successes. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like that would actually be really cool. 
Yeah. Um, to see. And then it's a lot less stressful. Those, those labs used to make me very stressed, like mm, someone yeah. over your shoulder. And I remember when we had to pick out of a hat, what we were going to do was like place an NG mm. tube, put in a Foley, sterile technique, glove wearing, like all of us were like, not sterile technique, please. No. <laughs> I don't remember what the other, place an IV. What were mm-hmm. the other ones? Um, and it was all like, you're like, oh, this looks like a vein because there's a million other needle sticks in this same area on this mannequin arm. So yeah. It gets better. Right it gets here. better in real life. <laughs> there's some real milestone moments, I feel like, in nursing and probably graduate school as well that stick with us, you know, in that period of learning nursing, like for the first time and then follow up in grad school you know, like first patients, like we were saying with prostate exams or just first experiences in the hospital. And I want to hear about a funny or a cringy moment from grad school or under grad school that still sticks with you. Oh, man. (laughs) So many cringy moments. (laughs) Um, I'll tell you mine. Yeah, you can go first. Um, well, I'm sure you know this story very well when I passed out in L and D during a certain C section. <laughs> <laughs> so I learned in nursing school that I'll never be an L and D nurse because <laughs> but you know, maybe I'm actually much better. I used to pass out um frequently <laughs> in nursing school and before nursing school I used to pass out because I couldn't take the health textbooks in high school. Oh no. Yeah, like pictures of like lacerated ears and like motorcycle crashes. I would just pass out in driver's ed. And um, <laughs> and I remember in um, coming into anatomy and physiology and anatomy. And I remember seeing like a cadaver for the first time and like hyping myself up before like, okay, if I pass out, then I know nursing is not for me. And I'm just gonna, you know, go my merry old way in another profession. But it didn't happen. And so I went to nursing school. But um, yeah, in L&D, I was in the OR with Tori Hurst. I've, Tori, if you're listening, good message egg. me so we could talk about it. She's such a good egg. But we were in the OR and this woman was going in for a C-section and I had met her beforehand and her husband. And, um, I was telling her husband, like it was my first OR experience. And he's like, Oh, you're going to pass out foreshadowing. <laughs> I was How'd like, you know, no. guy? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, are you? We're like cutting it, you know, cutting it up. And, um, yeah, we're like in the OR and the, uh, you know, surgeon is, is like cutting through a different tissue and stuff. And the nurse is right there, like, you know, telling him where to cauterize. And, um, I was like, this is really cool. Like, you know, the nurse is right up there, like, you know, telling the surgeon what to do. Like, maybe this is what I want to do. And, um, and then I remember him being like, clear, and they cut through the uterus and they pulled the baby out. And I remember immediately <laughs> my blood pressure drops because I was like, I- I've oh, never no. seen that. I've never seen that before. And I'm like walking through the OR. I'm like circling. I'm in all the isolated like garb, like the sterile garb. And I'm like walking through the OR, like trying to like stretch my legs because I'm like, I feel it coming. And like, you can't stop that train when it's started. Like... So I was like, okay, I, I, I told Tori, I was like, Hey, I'm going to, I, I'm going to pass out. I'm going to go. And she's like, okay. (laughs) So so, yeah, she's like, bye. (laughs) So I left the OR and I went into this like corridor hallway and I was like, I saw a bench and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna like go to that bench. And I'm like walking to the bench and my vision cuts out. And then I hit my I walk right into a corner of a wall and I fall backwards and I like, I'm like shaking and sweating and like, it was so bad. And then I was like, Oh, I can't like, somebody's going to see me. So I like hopped right back up, which probably that like homeostasis was not great. I like went to a bench and I like threw up like four or five times And then I just remember like laughing because I had like applied to a trauma externship like the day before. And I was like, there's no way. There's no way. I'm not cut out for this. I can do anything, but I can't do that. I'm not cut out for this. (laughs) 
And I remember like there was a nurse that was uh, like, she had come out and I was like, Hey, I was in there. Can I go back in? And she was like, did you throw up on yourself? And I was like, no, she was like, yeah. <laughs> and so I, like, I went back in and I like, like not on like, myself. I was like pretending like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, it's projectile. It's fine. It's, in the, it's fine. To- it's in the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> And, um, so I was just, so then I like quietly went back in and like, as they're like cleaning the baby and they were like, um, aspirating like fluid from their nose and stuff. And I was just like watching and the nurse looked over at me and she was like, you are extremely pale. You need to leave right now. Oh, no. so like, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. You're right. I'll get out of here. I'll get out of your hand uh, for now. Uh, I'll get out of here. And I think, and I was, I'm sure I was concussed. Like it was a, it was a whole, I was a whole thing. Cause I like just, I walked all the way back to mother baby, like still in my sterile garb with like my like hat and the like booties and like the gown and everything. Like nobody, you don't see anybody outside of the OR, like in all of that. And I just like walked through the hospital on the like a zombie. To baby, <laughs> like a zombie. Like I'm pretty sure I just followed I followed another patient and their nurse, like going to Mother Baby. You were like, I'm going behind. where you're going. This is where I belong. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh! And I think about that. I mean, but and now I just, I just, you know, I won't be in Mother Baby. I won't either. <laughs> Again, whoever does, whoever does, um, like, like Mother Baby labor and delivery. Amen, friend. Because that, I, I don't know. I, I never did well there. I, 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 I don't know. I give everyone who does anything other than what I do a whole lot of credit. Uh. You were saying, because you were telling me the other day, you're like not good with people that are the same age as you. You're like, like. I just, yeah, I just, it's uh, like the, my therapeutic communication. I think it's too casual. And so, yeah, if I have a patient who's like my age, I. I often, I know I, they, I, I get weird. I get, I mean, I, I'm like weird, but I get like <laughs> jumpy or I don't know. And it was the same in nursing school. Cause my cringe story, just because you started talking about um, like maternity and stuff is when we were in mother baby, I was only postpartum and it was someone our age then and we were 19. Um, and it was just something like, I just remember being like, Oh, like, and talking to her about, um, like using that squishy, the, I'm sorry, I'm really making myself sound dumb. The water bottle that you have to use to like cleanse yourself after you have a baby naturally. Oh. And you're mm-hmm. like almost like a, uh, oh my gosh, sorry. I'm having a tough time with it. I this, don't know. But. Cause I, yeah, I don't, I've never been in L and D, but okay. Makes anyway, sense. It, yeah. It's like a, something you, like a water bottle that you yeah. use to clean yourself and yeah. I'm like, oh, do you like, are you planning on using that? And again, the things we learned in nursing school and the things that occur in reality are just not, they're not the same, right? So in yeah. nursing school, we learned like you have a baby and the baby's really healthy and you are just, you just, I didn't realize like how crazy it is to have a baby and things are yeah. torn up and there's stitches and like you're sore and in nurse school, it's like they have a baby and they cleanse themselves and maybe they want like some hot packs and they learn how to breastfeed using the football hold and then they go home and everything's great. But like reality is like, there's a lot of things. Yeah. And uh, so she was in the bathroom and um, I, I think she was like kind of crying. And again, she was our age and I'm like, are you okay? You know, I just, I'm, I don't know how to help you. And yeah. I don't know what you need. I know what I read, but I'm certain that that's not right. Like, um, so yeah, that, that unknown, those unknown things for me are, I just get very funny when people are, I feel bad. Like, I'm like, yeah. Oh, you're my age. And yeah. And like what I do, like the work I do now, especially post COVID, like when I see patients who are around our age, I just did you know, it's really sad because I also had COVID. So like what happened, like Mm -hmm. why, like, what's the difference, you know, like what's, how, how did this occur? So I I know I just am like, so jumpy. I have to work (laughs) on it. My therapeutic communication with people our age. (laughs) Do you feel like that experience or, I mean, it, it obviously affected how your nursing practice is some way like now, cause you, I mean, you certified in geriatrics too, cause you have like a really therapeutic effect on, on that population. Thanks. Well, it definitely did to, to be truthful. Uh, 
I think I've said this many times, but yes, the reason I, I knew I wanted to be a nurse practitioner, I think like when I became a nurse and kind of seeing the role, I, I think I knew I wanted to, to become a nurse practitioner for a long time. Um, but when I, when I went through mother baby, I was like, I, I just, I know I can't do this in, in nursing school. And so uh, there's for NP, you pick like a certain specialty. So mm-hmm. there's like, you could be FNP, you could be adult Jero, you could be psych. Um, and then of course there's like midwife and things mm-hmm. like that. But um, I purposely chose adult Jero because I didn't want to um, have to do a clinical in, um, in GYN. I just, <laughs> I know I, it's not something I could ever do. It's Um, we all have our things like some people really hate sputum or like really hate like trachs, like all of that was fine for me. Mm -hmm. Critical care was fine for me. But if I had like a patient in the hospital who had their period, I just, I didn't know what to do. I just, (laughs) I don't know. It's just too much. So we all have our own things, things. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, Maybe that's my thing too. I feel like I, I didn't know what my thing, I still don't really know what my thing is. But maybe it's L and D. Maybe it's because I just don't know that that realm right. at all. And like, if I again, if I ever have a baby, like, thank you to all of the nurses who will help me. And you are much better than I. <laughs> um, yeah, and, uh, that definitely did. But also, I I just I do prefer like the older population, and and, and I know you know like kind of more like end of life or like those mm-hmm. those discussions are what I prefer to do, and I. I I know they occur in younger ages, but maybe those conversations would be ones I wouldn't be able to have uh, or have the ability to. So yeah, that's, I feel like it it just, I mean, I feel like you can handle more and more as you get more experience. Oh, you know, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. The more conversations you have or people, things you see, you're like, Mm -hmm. I saw that once before, or I've seen, you know, and then you can kind of talk about things more openly. Yeah. Yeah. This is kind of a loaded question, um, so feel free to sit on it too. But how do you, how has your idea of the nursing profession changed from when we were in nursing school, when you started nursing, to to your idea of it now? I don't know if I ever um, told you this. Oh, sorry, I'm losing my headphone. Um, when I first decided, like that, I, I knew I wanted to do nursing since I was really young maybe like 12 or so. Um, but I just think I thought that it would be more glamorized. Like I, I didn't actually realize how sick people could be or like really what the role entailed. Mm -hmm. And I really thought it would be a lot more like kind of more like sunshine and rainbows and like bright hallways and beautiful colored walls and like people who were really grateful. And, um, and then when we started clinicals, I was like, this is really a lot more than I realized. Like, again, you know, how sick people can be, or, I mean, I had been in the hospital with like sick grandparents and things, but like the inner workings of an institution or like how much work um, it is to like care for someone properly. I had a, an old coworker, um, wonderful woman and mom and uh, her son six. And, um, he like, she would go to work and come home and she'd be like, I'm too tired or I'm too dirty. Don't touch me or whatever. And he'd be like, well, what'd you do all day? And she'd say, think of what you did today from the second you woke up to the second you went to bed and imagine not being able to do any of those things and having someone to do them for you. She's like, I'm that person. That's what I'm doing all day. And I always think of her, um, and like her telling that to him. Cause first of all, she's the best and her son is so cute, but when she said that, I was like, oh my God, like, that's so true. Right. Like you go into work in the morning. Like for me, when I was inpatient, I, I don't like brushing people's teeth, but for me, when I wake up in the morning, if I don't brush my teeth, my day is just, uh, it's a terrible day for me. Mm -hmm. And so I would go in in the morning and I would do my AM vitals and I would brush all of my patient's teeth. And like, that sounds crazy. And that's not a priority that all of us hold, but like, to me, that is like something really important. And of course, and I worked respiratory, so tons of yeah. trachs and vents. And so the VAT bundle, of course, I, I did some good, like unselfishly, but yeah, when you think of those types of things you uh, do, 
that I, that I thought, I don't remember what the question was, but I don't know why I just wanted to tell you that no, that's that, kind of what the nursing profession yeah. like became. How, yeah. Oh, you were asking me how it's changed. So, um, yeah, I think the reality, what I had in my mind versus the reality of the profession. And um, I, I hope people who are listening to this maybe aren't all nurses, but uh, the truly like we're very undervalued often. And I think the role is very confused, both in media and maybe what we expect to do when we go into it. Um, yeah, we really, I think it's a, an amazing role. And I feel truthfully like I've provided a lot more good than I ever could have imagined I would have been able to when I was in school. So it's changed for me a lot. Um, so that's and uh, another, like there's this statement that was like, do you ever think of how many of the photos you're in the background of, like in your whole life? And I always feel like, oh, I've been to Disney World a couple of times and I'm in a million backgrounds of these photos or whatever. But like the amount of family memories I've made with families that aren't my own, people who are in the hospital long-term or how many hands you've held when people have passed away, like, where like we are we we're there and so um mm -hmm. yeah it's really it affords you the ability to to be a lot more than i ever thought i could have what a beautiful response oh, thanks <laughs> i didn't even i'm like i hope people aren't watching this on video i haven't really thought of it that much so thanks for asking that because i don't think we get to reflect on how much we do in a professional uh area and then how much it benefits us too you know it's, yeah. it's definitely it goes both ways I think, and a lot of times that kind of the value in what we do gets lost a lot too, because I mean, you're just trying to get through your day and you, you know, all these things that you have to hit, but you're not like, you know, really appreciating like all the things. And you, a lot of times you don't get the same appreciation. Yeah. Like in the ICU, a lot of times, you know, everybody's intubated. So like, they don't know you're doing mouth care on them every four hours right. and turning them every two and giving baths every right. day and like making right. sure they don't get infections. And, you know, it's, it's just part of your work list, you know? Right. I think too, like, at least for me, when I was a, a newer grad, I feel like my, the profession was driven by tasks. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like when meds are due and, you know, when you expect to do certain things and when lunch comes and when you have to give insulin and um, drawing labs in the morning and when draw labs are due and as you become better in your skill set or like if you're able to draw labs on your first stick as opposed to sticking and then finding someone to help you stick because you just, it's not your, it's not in your bag yet, but it will be eventually, I promise. Um, once you're able to like step away from the tasks, I feel like that's when the joy of nursing really comes in. But being good at the tasks, like same as we talked about with nursing school, like those tasks are the building blocks to really, I think, loving the profession. Yeah. Because um, I feel like it's really easy to be like, oh, it's I have to do this and I have to do this and I have to chart every four hours and did I chart on my lines and this IV is over overdue and I have to change these lines and in the morning you make this list and it's like I have twelve hours and you're like that's not enough time to do all these tasks and and then you sit and you get to talk to someone or talk to a family member or do something. And then you're like, that was worth it. What I did today was worth it. And so sometimes when the tasks bog you down it, yeah, it loses its luster. I think that there's, that's a really good point in that, you know, there's so much that nursing teaches us, but there's so many things that only experience can teach us, you know? Right. And like, I mean, and it's funny because like you don't get accepted into nursing school because you're an intuitive, thoughtful, caring person, you get accepted to nursing school because you have a three, seven GPA, <laughs> right. you know, right. Like there's, right. I think, you know, there's, it should be, t it should be, it, it would behoove nursing students to be taught early on that it takes more than just a GPA to mm -hmm. be a nurse, you know, and mm -hmm. there's, but we do get all of those like building blocks of right. like, this is what you need to do. And these are all the tasks you need to to complete. And then over time, like, you know, that experience will come in those like joy moments where you can right. like complete right. all of those tasks, but also be therapeutic. Like, I think that just comes like with in experience time. and be getting comfortable with everything. Yeah, no, I, you know? I agree. I agree. I think it, and, and again, yeah, like when you're not good at those tasks and then you're just like running around and it's like the first year and like starting out is such a challenge. And so, um, when you, when you get them under a couple sticks or you put in a couple of foley's on your own or, you know,
you've properly like unclogged the G tube using, you know, like the, the, that won't take you all day because you know, you, I don't know. I'll never forget those, all that splash in your face. Yeah. So yeah. only a couple times. And then you realize like, don't buy nice scrubs anymore. Or... Yeah. What would be, what would be a good takeaway like to tell a nursing student or somebody thinking about going into nursing in regards to like, you know, overall, like what it takes to be a nurse. I mean, I feel like we kind of, we touched on it already. I think, I think, I think, um, I think it's great to be a nurse. Uh, being a good nurse is really all about like the personality. I, um, by no means I'm the smartest, but I definitely worked hard and I feel like I gave a lot and like a lot of support I got and a lot of support I've given. And so, um, if you go into nursing or if you're in it now, just, I don't know, like, I guess foster, imagine what you would want someone to do for you. If God forbid you were in the bed and be that person for someone else. And I feel like if you can, um, walk away knowing that you've done what you needed to do or, or wish someone would do for you, then you've never done anything wrong. Uh, for nursing school though, uh, push through. I mean, I know. it's, it's not easy because again, if it was you in the bed, you wouldn't want a nurse standing on the side of the bed being like, I never study farm or I don't actually really know. And that's why it's hard is because it's, it's humans in our hands. It's not, it's not numbers. It's, it's human. We're making, we're making decisions for, for people just like us. And so I I think, uh, it should be hard. I'm, I'm happy it was hard if it made us work and know things. Um, it's to give give yourself credit when you don't do well (laughs) and (laughs) just, just remember it's, it's not for the test you're learning. You'll like you, we talked about, you really will use like everything you learn sometime. So I think that would be, uh, yeah. It's worth it, I think, would be the the takeaway. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I think we're going to wrap it up here. Oh, thanks, Mag. Shan, this was so much fun. Oh, my gosh. Thanks for – these were great questions. Thanks for – I'm pretty sure I ugly laughed a couple times. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I'm sorry if my – I'm sorry if my voice isn't good on this microphone. I hate hearing myself on the answer machine. Oh, my gosh, no. No, you're totally (laughs) Thanks to all who listened. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. We'll talk to you soon. That brings us to the end of the show. Thanks for tuning in to Nursing Uncharted. To learn more about today's episode, make sure to explore the show notes at AmericanMobile.com slash Nursing Uncharted. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a guest. If you're a nurse interested in traveling, visit AmericanMobile.com to explore the largest database of travel nursing jobs in the industry and the amazing benefits that American Mobile has to offer. Also, a special thanks to producer Jonathan Carey, assistant producers Katie Schrauben and Sam McKay, and Aiden Dykes for the music and editing. Until next time, take care of yourself.